Okay, so we had been in Spain for the last month and although that's not that much time, it was long enough to experience some culture shocks. So in this video we're gonna talk to you about some of the things we've noticed that Spaniards do differently to us in our home countries. Right. Let's start. The first one is probably one of the first things we noticed when we entered Spain because we were going on a road trip and we realized that they have so many roundabouts in Spain. More yes. than I've ever seen in my life. It's crazy. Whenever there should be a red light, instead they put a roundabout there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Except you're in the center of the city, then they still have red lights. But other than that, roundabouts. Here's one, 200 meters further, another one. Another one, one. yeah. <laughs> And it's crazy because they have such a big variety of roundabouts. They have some with eight lanes that where I was so confused. How do I have to drive here? We were freaking out, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they also have the smallest roundabouts ever. <laughs> Literally, it's just a pole in the middle. Instead of just leaving it out, no, you still have to go in a circle around a pole. Smallest roundabout ever. <laughs> I think we like it because I think we actually got faster the places we wanted to go. Yeah, it's a good thing. Roundabouts are pretty cool, so well yeah. done. Disclaimer, in this video we may say that some things are weird and that doesn't mean they are bad. We mean that they are different to what we're used to. That could also mean that they're actually better. Yeah, so, so don't come at us, please. <laughs> the next culture shock is more for me because it's about Spanish, the language. In Mexico, There's every- a spider in front of the lens. Can Just crawling it? into my lens. <laughs> <laughs> so, Waza was saying. Waza was saying. <laughs> Waza was saying. In Mexico, every time I hear someone speaking with a Spanish accent, it feels weird. It feels too formal to me. Saying vosotros, estáis, and all of that stuff. Uh, why does it sound formal? Maybe because every time I hear that, it reminds me of a documentary or something mm. like that. And now for us, and I'm including myself in there because mm. I learned this Spain Spanish in school. Vosotros is just the normal version of saying you guys, mm -hmm. but ustedes is the formal version. So ustedes is actually the formal way. That blew my mind that ustedes come from usted, so they feel like we are the formal ones when we talk like yeah. that. When we spoke Spanish for the first time together, Yannick was saying, vale, vale, vale. Vale, vale, como estáis? Gracias. And now you're like, que pedo, güey. <laughs> yeah, now I speak like a Mexican. Mm -hmm. But I still like the vosotros. Next time when I come to Mexico, I'm gonna say hello to your parents. I'm gonna say, como estáis? I como estáis vosotros? No, we would feel so weird. I could never that. use vosotros. It's not that I hate it, <laughs> but it's just not not my thing. It feels so formal, it feels weird. So let's stick to the languages because our next point is about how Spaniards pronounce English words. It's actually pretty cute <laughs> because when we were in our Airbnb and the host was explaining us things about the apartment, instead of saying Wi-Fi, she said Wi-Fi. And she told us that people from Spain like to pronounce English words with their own Spanish version. Yeah, the Spanish pronunciation. Yeah. And I got very interested in it, so I started doing some research myself. These are things that I found online, so if I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments, okay? I saw that they do that because they're scared that other Spanish people will make fun of them if they try to pronounce it correctly in English. Yeah, that's probably the case in every country, though. What's an English word? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so look, in Germany, we say Apple. <laughs> no, With the German L, we don't say apple, right? We oh, say yeah. Apple. Like Apple. Same thing and in Germany. And in Mexico too. In Mexico, I say cat soup, I say yogurt. <laughs> instead, yogurt. Of, instead of yogurt. Yeah. And since we're talking about languages already. This video is sponsored by Chatterbox Streams. Uh... This is a language app where it is all about live streams. These live streams are hosted by funny cool native speakers that are talking about everyday situations. For example, about their hobbies or how to flirt with someone. It's so nice because it feels like you're hanging out with a friend and they're not just talking to you in their native language, but they're actually caring about you, understanding them and learning their language. So when the day comes that you're in front of a native speaker, you can understand what they're saying. Yes, and what's great about these live streams is that they are tailored to different levels of difficulty. You have the ones that are for beginners where they talk very slow and they're explaining more. And then you have the advanced ones where they talk pretty fast, so actually like a normal native speaker would talk. 
When using the app, you can access the live streams that are happening in that moment where you can chat with them, you can ask them questions and engage with the live streamers. Live streamers? <laughs> live streamers. With <the> streamers. <laughs> but you can also access the older live streams if you want to. When I downloaded it, I spent like an hour there. It was amazing. The languages available are Spanish, French, German, and English. Yes. So if you want to give it a try, you can use the link in our description. You can try it for free for seven days. And afterwards, if you like it, you can either get the annual subscription and you pay 1.66 euros per month, which is pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to pay month by month, you pay 2.99 euros per month. And then you can cancel anytime if you want to. Yes. We hope you like it. We think it's an amazing tool to practice your listening skills. And thank you so much, Chatterbox Streams, for sponsoring this video. And let's go to the next point. Yes. So, our next point is about the tipping culture in Spain. And we are pretty confused about it. I asked on Instagram, how much do you tip in a restaurant in Spain? And I got different types of answers, but the most common one was, you don't tip. That's so weird! We freak out every time we have to go to a restaurant. Yeah, especially after coming back from California, where you pay 20% of tip. It's crazy. <laughs> but some of you guys said, you can leave one or two euros per table. So that's what we did most of the times anyways. And <laughs> you guys on Instagram also said that they're gonna be very happy when you leave tip. Yeah, that they're very thankful. Yeah, but for some reason, <laughs> they, they were not really that happy, like most of them at least. They looked angry, the <laughs> first ones. Maybe it's actually weird if you leave tip and they're like, why are you leaving tip? Please let us know in the comments how much tip you leave or if you don't leave any. So the next point is something that made it very hard for us as YouTubers to record anything at the beach. And it's because in Spain, there is a topless culture. Uh -huh. Now, I didn't see that many people. It's not like everybody's topless at the beach, but we saw a couple and we couldn't record there. So that's different than in Mexico because there, pretty much everybody is wearing a swimsuit all the time. Yeah, only in Tulum, I saw some topless women. Yeah, but yeah. people were staring at them. In Germany, it's also different. We have nude beaches. That's where the people are completely naked. Letting him hang. <laughs> yeah. And then we have the normal beaches, but there, barely anybody's topless. Mm -hmm. It's alles oder nichts. Yeah, alles oder nichts. Totally. <laughs> I gotta say, it's kind of cool because guys are always just with them their swim shorts. They're always topless. Yeah. And girls never get to be. So it was nice to see that girls can do that too. They can just have their swim shorts or swim tangas or whatever. Yeah. And, and it's not that weird. Topless. Yeah, it's just nipples. I've been in Germany. I've seen so many FK Kastrand, so many beaches where people are just naked. Also, you've been to Temptation, so. I've been to Temptation. After Temptation, eh, whatever. After Temptation, everything is one normal. one more nipple like this. <laughs> 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 so the next one is not such a big culture shock for me, but I think it's more for you, because in Spain they have a very strong going out culture. The first night already, we went out at night, we walking around. So many people in the streets, so many restaurants. It was great to see because they look like they're having so much fun. Yeah. In Germany, the people probably prefer to just walk around or yeah. go to a park, but not just drinking and eating that often. I think the difference though is the price because in Spain, drinks and food were cheaper than in Germany. That's true. Yeah, cool. So if we would move here, we would go out all the time. Party know, animals! <laughs> <laughs> now the next point is still talking about the food and it's about the lunch and dinner times here in Spain. It's very weird for us, very confusing, especially because we also have a weird yeah. system. Right. The lunch and dinner times here in Spain are a mix of Germany and Mexico. That's what we figured out. Okay. In Mexico, you eat lunch at 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. Now here in Spain, the restaurants close at 3 p.m. <laughs> so we have to have lunch earlier like in Germany right <laughs> right now let's go on to dinner in Mexico we eat dinner around 8 or 9 p.m. same here same in Spain yeah in Spain, Spain. <laughs> so cute same in Spain yeah because the restaurants are opening again at 7 or 8 p.m. yeah now in Germany that's too late because in Germany we're eating at 6 30 or 7 that's it <laughs> so, you are you it. totally confused now? <laughs> okay, long story short, <laughs> Spanish people, they eat lunch at the same time as Germans and they eat dinner at the same time as Mexicans. That's what we figured out. And that's why we are having a hard time here. <laughs> yeah, and if that's totally not true, then please correct us in the comments. Yeah. One time I was in Barcelona. Barcelona, tío. For an exchange and the family that I was staying with ate dinner at 10 p.m. 
And that was super late for me. Yeah. Now we do it all the time, actually. But, <laughs> <laughs> but back then, when but you were then, a German, it was a shock. <laughs> I was like shocked. <laughs> Culture shock. <laughs> Well, cringe. Okay, please don't unsubscribe. <laughs> the next one is something we noticed because, as some of you know, we were driving around trying to look at houses. Because you want to move here? Yeah, we were nosy and we wanted to see the houses of people and how they look and their gardens. And we realized they have such big fences, most of them. You yeah. could only see the, the, the roof. Yeah, the roof. In my country, in Germany, you have small hedges. Is that how you call mm -hmm. it? Hedge? Or fences? No, yeah, oh, fences yeah. or hedges. Uh -huh. <laughs> but only like one meter high, so you can totally see everything. Yeah. The front yard, the house, the backyard. Sometimes, sometimes even the backyard. And in Mexico, it's a completely different system. The houses are all together. And we usually don't have that many houses with front yards. No. So you can only see the front of the house right in your face. <laughs> <laughs> right in your face. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Here it is. So here in Spain, it actually reminded us of Beverly Hills. Yeah. We were driving around a few months ago. <laughs> we were trying to be nosy again. Yeah, we wanted to see the mansions of the celebrities and we couldn't see anything. <laughs> so here fancy. it's the same. There are a lot of celebrities in Spain, maybe. Maybe. And the last point is something that we didn't get to experience that much this time, but I experienced it last time when I was in Barcelona mm -hmm. on my exchange. And it's that to say hi, they kiss you on both cheeks. Mm. Even the, the guy from the family, like the father from the family, kissed me on both cheeks. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Man, that was weird. <laughs> for you, because you're a German. I mean, for me, it would be weird the both cheeks, because in Mexico, we only do one. Yeah. But I've heard that Spaniards are very touchy, too. So I think we would get along in that sense. I wouldn't feel weirded out. And me, on the other hand, I would be like, you into me? Ah, Hello you're there. Funny. How are you doing? <laughs> Maybe you're old, dude. You've gotten used to it now. You're like, touch now, me. Now I'm also touchy. I'm like, ah. oh. <laughs> Yeah, so these were all of our points. Please let us know if these were correct or if you think it's actually different. Yeah, we had a lot of fun in Spain. We loved it, as some of you know, if you watched our last video. If you didn't, watch it because it's cool. Share this video with your friends that might be interested and subscribe to our channel. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> <laughs> now every S she's saying, hasta la vista. <laughs> hasta la vista. <laughs> <laughs> no, I suck at this. So please don't, don't hate them so much on me. Hasta la vista. Baby. Vosotros. <laughs>